many options to clean your skin that I get a lot of patients that'll say, well, do I choose a bar soap? Do I choose a cleanser, a liquid cleanser? Do I choose a body wash? What am I supposed to go with? There are advantages and disadvantages with each form of cleanser and you really wanna focus in on what matters to you most to make this decision. So let's go through each of these types of options out there and you can decide what makes the most sense. Let's start with bar soap. There is nothing wrong with bar soap. I use a bar soap. I like the way a bar soap feels. It makes me feel clean and it's something that I prefer from an eco-friendly perspective in the sense that there's no container that I need to worry about getting rid of afterwards. Now the pH of bar soap is a little higher than liquid soap. Our skin tends to naturally be a little bit more acidic so the introduction of a bar soap or any kind of soap generally has a higher pH, which makes them a little bit more alkaline than the acidic nature of our skin. When soap comes into contact with our skin, there is a drying or dehydrating effect. Bar soaps tend to have a pH around 10 to 12, versus liquid soaps or body soaps tend to have a pH closer to eight. You do need the pH of the cleanser that you're using to be higher than your skin's pH to get that cleansing effect doesn't have to be a 10 to 12 like a bar soap is, but that being said, you might see more dryness that comes with it. For me, in the summertime, my skin runs a little oilier, so I tend to prefer that drying effect from a bar soap. In the winter, I often switch over to a liquid soap knowing that that dryness can be excessive, and I try to reduce it by addressing it through the pH of the product that I'm choosing to ensure that I get the results I need without having to constantly put on more moisturizer. Regardless of which soap you choose, whether it's bar soap or liquid soap, they generally have certain base ingredients in most products. They will have a surfactant in it, for example. Surfactants are polar particles where there's one side that loves water, one side that doesn't. When you use a product that has surfactant in there, the part that doesn't like water is designed to attach to dirt, oil, and debris on your skin, while the polar part of it, the part that likes water, sticks out so that when water comes along, it can pull that oil, dirt, or debris off of your skin with the polar nature of the particle attracted to the water to pull it away from your skin. When you hear about products that can be over drying or irritating to your skin, it might be that the surfactant chosen for the product is overly drying. This is what we hear about with an ingredient called sodium lauryl sulfate or SLS for short. It's not that it's a bad ingredient, it's just that it's very good at what it does, which is actually pulling away oil, dirt, and debris from our skin. And for some, yes, that can leave the skin feeling overly dry or dehydrated, so it may not be ideal for all skin types out there. If you see a product that is sulfate-free, it doesn't mean that it's better, it just means that they're using a different surfactant to achieve this result. This different ingredient is hard to say if it's harsher or better than the one that you're trying to avoid. So try to be cautious about marketing and understand what you're getting when you choose a sulfate-free product. But that being said, at least most companies out there that are being mindful of the reason that people are choosing sulfate-free products generally choose surfactants that are not quite as harsh or irritating as sulfates might be. So it usually is advisable that if your soap is over drying you out, whether it's liquid or bar soap, try to consider one that might be sulfate free, but mostly based on the drying effect of the product. This is for example, what um, baby shampoos do. So when you see a no more tears baby shampoo, it generally means that there's still sulfates in there. So it's less irritating to the eyes. Now the other two categories of ingredients in soaps would be fragrances and preservatives. What's always fascinating to me about this conversation is that even though you might find products that are fragrance free, the base ingredients of soap do not necessarily smell that good. So if you do choose a product that has no fragrance in it, be mindful of the fact that you may not like the smell that comes from it. You may not feel like you smell clean. So don't feel like you have to choose a fragrance free product unless you're actively allergic to the ingredients in there. What comes up more in allergy testing for us when I do patch testing for skin allergies is preservative allergies. That's always fascinating to me because most people don't even know or recognize that that could be an allergy they need to be mindful of. But consider the fact that preservatives might be a bigger trigger. And if you're not sure what challenges you're faced with, talk to your dermatologist about patch testing so we can actually figure out what the issue with your soap might be. Is the soap so effective at removing oil, dirt, and debris that it's leaving you over dried? Does the cleanser have a fragrance in it that you might be actually allergic to? Or could it be that there's a preservative in the product that your skin is sensitive to that we need to make sure that you look for and avoid? 
knowing those three different possibilities will yield different results in terms of the product you choose is really important to dice apart detective wise so that you make the right decisions for your skin. From an effectiveness point of view, the difference between bar soap and liquid soap is pretty negligible. I wouldn't choose the form of soap based on how clean you want to be. I would say though that if you have a buildup of oil on your skin and you're looking to reduce that tendency, then bar soap might be a better choice for you so that you get more drying out of it. I'd say the vast majority of people that are looking for more hydration that I come across as opposed to over drying their skin. So bear in mind that you might actually be one of these people that prefers a liquid version. It comes down to it though, I'd say most people would choose liquid soap versus bar soap based on their past experiences and what they're used to and what makes them feel clean. It's not that one is better than the other, but you may actually find that if the issue that you're struggling with with soaps and cleansers is that they are over drying, that choosing the liquid versions of them, considering the sulfate-free versions of them, and then considering the possibility that if you really are still irritated by your product, you might actually be allergic to one of the ingredients so that we can do testing to figure out if that's possible. It just helps you navigate this process. Ultimately, soap works by degreasing your skin, so it could be irritating because it's just really good at what it does. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're actually allergic to it. And dicing apart some of these manifestations on the skin, and clinically evaluating your skin, your dermatologist can distinguish between skin that is overly dried out versus skin that is actually having a true allergic reaction to it. They have two separate clinical pictures to them, and we can discern between that to help navigate your choices so that you don't go out there and waste a lot of money.